Well, I think every country today is looking at where they can fit in the chip ecosystem, because right now there's not a single country in the world that is anywhere close to having a self-sufficient uh, supply chain domestically. Everyone is reliant on uh, someone else. And so for countries and for companies, the challenge is to find the niche where they have a comparative advantage uh, and where they can compete at the cutting edge. And so for a country like India, which is trying to build up its semiconductor ecosystem, I think taking the, the major players head on is a, a very big challenge because they're so well established, because they have resources on their side. But the design expertise that you mentioned is something that I think India has a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity to leverage because there's so many different ways you can use design expertise, so many different niches in which uh, it can be expressed. And so that's the challenge for, for really every country is to find the part of the supply chain where their comparative advantage lies. If you were to evaluate the prospects of various countries, um, um, do you think India has a chance of succeeding in its effort to, to become a part of this ecosystem? Well, I think India certainly uh, has a very good chance of, of becoming a part of the semiconductor ecosystem. And in some ways, as you alluded to, it already is. There's a, a very large number of semiconductor design experts uh, in India right now. I think the, the question is going to be, can that design ecosystem be further developed? Can more design-focused firms be established in India? And then in other segments of the supply chain, like the manufacturing or the assembly, uh, will India play a bigger role? in those segments as well. And the challenge is that there's competition in every step of the supply chain. Uh, India is not alone. Uh, most other major economies around the world are trying to build up their own semiconductor industries. And so when governments and companies think about where to insert themselves, where to focus, they've got to look at the entire competitive landscape and ask where their competitive advantages actually lie. Um, what, what about China? Because uh, China has really made a concerted effort uh, over several years to, to, to really uh, create space for itself in this ecosystem. I mean, they, they've plowed uh, billions of dollars into this effort. Uh, do, do, you, uh, do you think they have succeeded to some extent? Well, measured by the, the metrics that Chinese leaders are looking at, which is the share of chips that China produces domestically, they are making progress. It's still the case that China is hugely reliant on importing high-end chips from Taiwan, from South Korea, from Japan, from the U.S. But compared to 10 years ago, China imports less as a share of its overall chip consumption. But a lot of this has been done in non-economically viable ways. It's been happening because the Chinese government is pouring really vast sums into the industry. And I think that suits the interests of Chinese leaders who are concerned above all about security considerations. It's probably not in the long run interest of uh, Chinese uh, citizens because it's driving up costs, uh, spending huge sums of money uh, without actually producing very many viable businesses. I think China shows the challenges of trying simply by brute financial force to break your way into the industry. You can do it in certain ways, um, but the resource expenditure is vast, tens and tens of billions of dollars every single year. And even then, that doesn't guarantee you actually have viable companies at the end.